fucking crazy. thing on what's up y'all your boy killer cam here uh, we're at the shop today um, here at the shop we do um, we do work on cars um, turbocharging engine swaps um, transmissions general maintenance you know um, just something to make a little uh, extra cash on the side so that we can afford this expensive hobby um, <clears throat> that we have here with these beautiful SR20 cars um, I just got done with a customer's car um, it is a black 200 SX I believe it's a 95 or a 96 now this car initially belonged to someone named Rich Bailey a lot of you may know him some may not um, but Rich Bailey is an SR20 heavy hitter out of um, New York uh, pretty well known around these parts much respect to um to rich bailey man but um anyway this car um he sold it to a family member of his that lives down here in georgia and uh he sent them my way so that i could um take care of some much needed maintenance on the car for him and uh add a little extra power so um he was looking for say uh around 300 horsepower range so what I recommended was the SR20 VET um, X-Trail turbo setup um, I think those make around 280 at the at the crank in an X-Trail <laughs> stock um, but anyway the car is here um, we just finished it up and it's time to hop on the dyno so I figured why not bring you guys along so that you can see uh, the type of work that we do here and uh, you can check this this car out that I just finished so um, let's get into it <music> This is the car. This is um, this is the black 200 SX I was telling you guys about. Uh, it belongs to a customer of mine, uh, Ramel O'Connor. Um, he's kind of low key with it, so he's not really like in the scene like that. But I think he would definitely like to get more involved uh, with the SR20 scene, and um, you might see him at uh, one of the. The next conventions or get togethers who knows we're trying to get him into this so yeah this is the car uh, I don't know if it's a 95 or a 96 uh, 200 SX this is a P11 VE SR20 VE out of a P11 Primera 
That is a SR16VE N1 valve cover. Uh, super rare part. Not very many of them. I believe there was only like 500 of those engines ever made. There's also an N1 intake manifold here and an N1 throttle body. Um, this car was initially set up for all motor. So it had N1 cams and all these, uh, all these N1 parts <laughs> to help complement um, each other as far as uh, naturally aspirated goes. But he wanted a little extra power out of it around 300. So what we did was we put an X-Trail turbo setup on here for him. OEM turbo, I believe it's a T25 or T28. Um, I had a fabricator of mine do the uh, do all the piping. Shout out to my cow. He does great work. The car was initially on a Callum ECU. I believe it was tuned by uh, Marsh Tuning out of Connecticut. A lot of you m might know that name. But the only thing with the Callum ECUs are they are outdated. So uh, we couldn't really do any real tuning as far as um, boosted applications go. So we put a Nismotronic in this car. Uh, Nismotronic ECU, shout out to John Kerr. He has um, truly changed the SR20 game for everyone uh, as far as the tuning solutions go. And uh, we also converted the car to uh, speed density, so it's running a GM 3-bar map sensor and a um, GM IAT sensor to keep an eye on temps. This car is super, super clean, man. I'm jealous. We've seen up front. Got the sensor with some, um, some Rota GT3s for now. I think he's about to uh, get some TD37s to throw in here, actually. Um, car is super clean, super mint, man. Inside and out. Body is straight as an arrow. And he has taken very well care. Um, very good care of this car. Uh, interior is uh, super clean, super clean. We added, uh, he likes, uh, he liked to keep it old school, so instead of running a three-port boost solenoid, we just installed a Apexy boost controller there for him, and, uh, he liked the triple pillar, so we ordered that from, uh, Low Tech. A triple pillar for him, we got the AEM X-Series wideband here, um, coolant temp and boost. We also changed the downpipe to a, uh, Hold on, let me get out of here. This compressor is on. Uh, we also changed the downpipe to a VRS uh, unit, 3-inch. The car already had a 3-inch exhaust on it, so that was pretty much a bolt-up affair. We didn't have to change anything from the cat back. Uh, we just added a test pipe and um, a VRS 3-inch downpipe to uh, complete the install. Super, super clean. <clears throat> very, very nice build. Um, very well put together car. And um, now we just get to see what kind of dyno numbers uh, it's going to put down. I'm estimating somewhere between 290 to 300 ish. Somewhere in that range. Uh, we want to keep the car safe and reliable for him to you know, enjoy it without breaking it. So, we're trying to keep it a little conservative um, so that the car will last and stay together. So, very, very conservative timing um, <clears throat> and a very, very conservative boost. Maybe 14 pounds max. So, um, so yeah, man. I just figured I would take you guys along on the ride. So, let's get to it.
focus, focus, focus. And there you have it. All right, so there you have it. Um, the car made 294. I estimated between 290 to 300, somewhere in that range. Uh, 294 at 15 pounds. Um, what can I say? <laughs> Uh, I can't wait to give the car back to the customer. I know he's going to love it. The car is a blast to drive. It is absolute stoplight killer. There is no way my big turbo B13 can keep up with this thing from stoplight to stoplight. It's just not going to happen. <laughs> turbo spools instantly. Um, virtually no turbo lag whatsoever. Um, the car drives great. And uh, I, I really hope he enjoys it. So, um, yeah. Um, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe so we can keep this kind of content. Oh, I'm dark, dark. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe so I can keep this kind of content coming to you guys. And um, yeah, I'll catch you on the next one. Don't forget peace, power, and positivity. Peace.